What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here, and I have a confession to make. I love louvers. I love louver systems, I think they look amazing, and I love architecture that has louvers. I think they're such a cool uh, element of the facade of the building, I think it looks really great. So I'm always looking for new and interesting louver systems that might add to the complexity and the aesthetic of the building, and I found this image online this image over here. So uh, I thought it would be a, a cool idea to try to replicate something like that in Revit and try to see what's the uh, quickest and best approach to creating something like this. And as I found out, it isn't really that complicated to create some complex shapes such as this one, even though it does seem so. So that's what we're going to be creating in today's tutorial. Now, if you're interested in some Revit courses, make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com. That's going to be the first link in the description. Description. There I have some beginner, intermediate, as well as advanced courses. They are all uh, a few hours long. Uh, the, the longest one is the beginner course, which is 16 hours long. And there I can really take the time to go in depth into all of these complex Revit topics. So if you're interested in learning more about Revit, check it out. And also for all of my Revit project files, like this louver system that we're going to be creating today, well, you can find it on my Patreon. That's going to be the second link in the description. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. Okay, so here I am at my computer and this is that image and this is just something that I'm going to be using as a for reference for modeling this uh, this whole louver system or shading system. Uh, so I'm just going to go here into Revit and then go and create a new project. Now for the template, I'm just going to go with the architectural template and then click OK. Next, as soon as Revit starts up, we can get started working on our building. Uh, so first, I like to set up the levels. So I'm going to head over here to the project browser, uh, go to the south elevation, open that up. And uh, then I can see here that the units are in millimeters, which I don't like to work with millimeters. So I'm just going to go to the manage tab and then here change the project units from millimeters into meters because this is just going to be a rough uh, sketch. And then also let's use a couple of small places just to give us a, a, a bit more precision. Click OK and there we go. Uh, next um, I'm going to move this level down to 3 meters, hit enter and then I'm just going to right click and go to create similar. You can get the same option by typing in CS and then I'm just going to use the pick lines tool with the offset of 3 meters just to add a few more levels. Oops, I kind of added it on the wrong side. There we go. So just make sure to come from above. If you come from the bottom, it's going to place it down. So you want to come from above. There we go. Hit the escape key a couple of times and we're done with the levels. Okay, so let's go back into level one. Uh, go to the architecture tab and then here let's choose the wall tool. Uh, now in the properties, I'm going to change the, uh, the wall type to the storefront uh, storefront system family. Go here to the draw tools and pick out a rectangle. And uh, now for the height, I'm going to go up to level four and let's actually give it a one meter uh, top offset. Okay, so once we have all of this set up, we can just create a simple rectangle. Maybe something like this, perhaps. Let's see. Yeah, that looks nice enough. We can make it bigger or smaller uh, depending, of what, depending on what you're trying to achieve, but I'm happy with the way this looks right now. Okay, so once we have our building created, we can maybe double check in the 3D view what that looks like. So as you can see, I'm quite happy with the look. Maybe I can make it a bit smaller. Yeah, maybe like that. Okay, there we go. So once we have all of this set up, now, uh, now it's time to start adding that louver system. So for the louver system, what I'm going to do is move over to the massing and site tab and we have to create this as an in-place mass. Uh, now you can do that by turning on the show mass uh, function and go into uh, in-place mass. Now we can name it however you would like, maybe louver system. I'm just going to leave it as mass one. Uh, now I'm going to head over back into level one and first we need to add some surface on which we can start placing our line work. So if you remember from the image that we have over here, uh, as you can see these are both at a 45 degree angle away from the building horizontally and they're kind of at a 60 degree angle vertically 
or something like that. So I, I have to have first some sort of a surface on which I can place this edge line here and this line here as well. And also I need one vertical line in the middle in order to complete this shape and make it flow. Okay, so let's go back here, uh, go to reference plane, and then you want to go here to the corner, just like that, and make one reference plane like this, and make sure that it's a, at a 45 degree angle or 135 if you look at it from the other direction. Okay, so once we have one of these, let's create one that's running here vertically, just like that, extend it maybe like this, and then also you want to go back to reference plane and you want to add one that's kind of here in the middle running horizontally like that. Okay, and now we have to duplicate these or mirror them around. So select this one and then uh, you want to go here to the modify tools and use the mirror tool with the pick access option. MM is the shortcut. So you mirror it like this. Then you select those two, hold the shift key to remove this from selection. And then again, you go to the mirror tool and mirror it around here. Make sure that it's exactly in the corner and it is. So I'm happy with that. And now it's time to name them and then we can start uh, creating our shape. So I like to name them like this. So the first one I go here to click to name and this one is going to be number one. This one is going to be number two. This one is going to be number three this one number four and then for the middle ones uh, we can just call the, this one maybe one two three or one to two and this one can be maybe two to three because it's just in the middle okay so once we have all of those in place now it's time to start creating our actual uh, shape so for that shape, uh, we have to take a look at this building from the side. So I'm going to look at it from this side first. So that's going to be the east elevation. So this is east, so that's the east elevation. We can see the building and now we can start creating our shape. So first, before I start adding lines, I like to use the reference plane option to add a couple of markers uh, just to help me mark out some heights. So I'm going to select it and set it up here at maybe 0.6 meters. This one as well, 0.6, making it a total of 120. You can make it larger on, or smaller depending on what you're trying to achieve. Next, uh, let's move here to the simple line tool and we have to first pick out the work plane on which we're going to be placing this line. So I like to place it here at reference plane number one. So that's the first one, the one at an angle. Click OK and make sure that this is set to draw on work plane. This is really important. If it's set to draw on face, it might make a mistake. It might pick out the wrong face. So by setting it to draw on work plane, you make sure that it's selected or it's set up to the correct one. Okay, so now I'm just going to move in here close to the building and go up on a certain angle, maybe something like that, perhaps. Hit the escape key a couple of times. Next, go again to the line tool. And now you can change the work plane just by going here and opening up the placement plane drop menu. And let's go with the one to two. So that's the one in the middle, the horizontal one. And then let's add a small vertical line like this. Hit the escape key again a couple of times, go again to the line tool, and now set it to reference plane number two. So that's the one at the other corner. And again, you're going to start off here at the side and then go maybe like this. The escape key a couple of times, maybe we can make it a bit smaller. There we go. Okay, so once we have this, let's go into the 3D view. And now, as you can see, we have that one here at the corner, uh, kind of angled one in the middle that's straight and then the other one in the corner angled down. So now you simply just select all three and then you go to create form and you're done. You have your first form and as you can see it's kind of warped in space and it looks exactly how you want it to look. Now we can switch to the south elevation. Uh, now here just to make it a bit easier to see things I suggest you go here and set the display uh, style to wireframe and now we already have the first one so for this one we can just go to line set this to reference plane 2 3 so that's the that's the, the 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 horizontal one and then click OK again make sure this is set to draw on work plane and you will just add that little vertical segment 
go back to the line tool. In this case, let's go with reference plane number three. And again, you're going to go from the bottom up to the top. So just the opposite of what we already have. Hit the escape key a couple of times, go into the 3D view and again, but in this case, we can't really make a cross selection. I'm not sure what it will select. So I like to hover over this line selected, hold the control key and add these two to selection. Go to create form and there we go. We have the second form. Let's go back into east elevation like this. Again, set it to wireframe. So again, it's it's getting kind of repetitive. So you go to line, set the work plane to one, two. So that's the one in the middle. Do that middle line because we don't really need the first one. We already have it. Hit the escape key, go back to line. Now it's going to be reference plane number four. And then you're just going to kind of finish this off. Hit the escape key, go back into 3D. There we go. Select the first one, hold the control key. So you get that little plus sign next to your cursor. Select both of these and then create the form. There we go. And finally, let's move back into south elevation move over to this side. And in this case, we just need the middle one. So go to line reference plane is going to be the uh, two, three. And then just add the middle segment, hit the escape key back to 3D view. And then you select the first one, hold the control key, select the middle one, hold the control key, select the final one, create shape. And there we go. Uh, now you can select this, the whole shape, you can go to the material browser and just search for the material. Uh, now I already have a video on how to make perforated uh, materials. So I, I can link that in the description. Uh, but basically, as you can see here, we have a perforated material. So something like that would probably be probably be the best option uh, for this particular uh, for this particular building. So anyways, uh, once you have uh, set up the material in this case, maybe I can just go with aluminum. There we go. Uh, once you're done, you just go here to finish uh, mass and then uh, you can just move it around. Now I, I finished this mass first and then I went to kind of copy it around because if you decide to copy this shape in the uh, uh, here in the uh, uh, massing environment, it might give you some errors. So I tend to cancel out of that or to finish that mass, move to one of the elevations like this, like the south elevation, go to copy, make sure to check multiple, and then you can just copy it down multiple times, just like this. Uh, you can even maybe mirror it around. So maybe go to mirror, pick access, make sure to uncheck copy, and then maybe we can flip it around like that. So as you can see, this one is facing down and this one is facing up. So I, I guess it can make an interesting uh, building shape. You can maybe flip this one around as well. Let's try that. Uncheck copy. I guess it's not going to select the level in the 3D view. So let's go to south elevation. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, I think the building looks a lot better like this when they're kind of uh, inverted on each level. So that, that's how you can create this building. Now, of course, just to add a bit more detail, let's go to level one, uh, go to architecture, add a floor, maybe just a simple rectangular floor like this. There we go. Hit finish, go to the 3D view. And now just in order to save time, I'm just going to select the floor, uh, go to copy to clipboard here on the modify tab, and then you can play, paste it on uh, aligned to selected levels. So I am just going to select from level two, hold the shift key, select level four, click OK. And now as you can see, it's just going to duplicate all of those floors up. And of course, if we turn on shadows, it's going to look even better, especially if we go here to graphic display options, and maybe turn on ambient shading. Yeah, it looks really cool. Maybe go to lighting, maybe bring these shadows down a little bit. There we go. I think this looks really good. And of course, we can go to level one and create a, a camera view. Just like this, use the navigation wheel to look up a little bit. There we go. And then we can expand this a little bit. There we go. I think this looks uh, dynamite. So it's really cool. Add the shadows, 
add the ambient shadows, set the lighting just a little bit better. There we go. So it's a really cool way of making your building look really interesting and it's not that difficult to create uh, something like this. So there you go. That's how you can create these uh, these louver systems or these shading systems in Revit. I hope this was an interesting tutorial. And if you're uh, maybe interesting, uh, interested in the project files for this, check out my Patreon. The, the link is going to be in the description. And also the first link in the description takes you to my website, balkanarctic.com. And there you can find uh, beginner courses and also intermediate and advanced level courses for Revit. So if you're interested in taking your Revit knowledge to a whole nother level, check that out. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this quick tutorial. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video, and I'll see you in another tutorial in a few days. Have a nice day.